I appreciate you joining me today. Hope you're having a good day. We're going to be looking at an individual who is mentioned briefly in Genesis chapter 5 today. It's someone in the genealogy of Seth. Yesterday we spoke about Cain. The first half of Genesis 5 deals with Cain's family. The latter half deals with the genealogy from Adam, and eventually we're getting to Noah. And of course, this is ultimately about the genealogy of Jesus. And so there's an individual mentioned, and it's an odd account, but it's the account of a man named Enoch. And if you're familiar with Enoch, you know what's odd about him, that he walked with God. God took him. The hymn that is going to accompany our passage is the hymn, Walking Alone at Eve. Walking alone at eve, and viewing the skies afar, bidding the darkness come to welcome me, silver star. I have a great delight in the wonderful scenes above. God in his power and might is showing his truth and love. Home for a home with God, a place in its courts to rest. Sure in a safe abode with Jesus and the blessed. Rest for a weary soul, once redeemed by the Savior's love. Where I'll be pure and whole and live with my God above. Walking alone at Eve, a home with God. And so you can probably guess why this hymn was paired with this passage. Let's read it together. Genesis 5, verse 18. Jared lived 162 years and begot Enoch. After he begot Enoch, Jared lived 800 years, had sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. Enoch lived 65 years and he begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So what might we consider as an application for Enoch? One thing we can say about him is that he was faithful. He was counted as faithful. He had faith. And, you know, we're, we're leading up to Noah. And when we get to Noah in chapter 6, it begins by talking about how when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and it talks about the wickedness that was happening. Well, that was happening. It was, it was a progression. And so we think about the world that Enoch lived in and that Enoch was different. He was peculiar. And he was peculiar because he walked with the Lord. And that was happening less and less. He's faithful. He's faithful in a world that was becoming less and less faithful. And so in that, he's a good example. As he was faithful, he was pleasing to God. God didn't take him to punish him. He pleased God. And we can do the same thing. And if we are faithful, we are doing the same thing. We are doing what is pleasing to God. And God is pleased with us. And that is a marvelous thing. That, that God who is holy, that when we do what he wants us to do, that we can be holy as he is holy. Because that's what we are called to. And it doesn't mean we've never sinned, but it means we, we have found the answer to sin in him and that he is a forgiving God, and that he is gracious, and he is merciful. And Enoch had faith. All of these, all the individuals of faith, they were looking forward to something. They were looking forward to someone. When it really comes down to it, the seed promise, the, the promise that was made, right, when the Lord is dealing with Adam and Eve and the devil, you shall bruise his heel, he shall bruise your head. I will put enmity between your seed and her seed. That promise has already been made. And so Enoch, 
was moving, walking in faith towards the Lord. He's mentioned a, a couple of other places. Mentioned a couple other places. One of them is in Hebrews. So let's look over in Hebrews, and it just mentions him briefly in that list of the heroes of faith in verse 5. By faith, Enoch, by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Just as Abel had faith, Enoch had faith. Enoch is also mentioned in the book of Jude. In Jude, there's only one chapter, and in verse 14, in talking about the wickedness that was happening in Jude's time, in the first century, well, of course, wickedness is nothing new. Verse 14, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. One of the interesting things about Enoch is his son Methuselah. And what's interesting, those who write about the Jude passage make the point, it looks like in Methuselah there's a prophecy. And according to the Jude passage, it looks like Enoch is the one who prophesied this. That as Enoch had Methuselah, that the prophecy is, and what's interesting is that Methuselah dies the same year that the flood happens. And we know what the flood was, God judging the world. The point seems to be that, of course, God will judge the world again, only this time not with a flood. And, of course, we know what's coming, the ultimate judgment day, when the world and all the works that are in it are burned up. But to make this point, Enoch had faith. Enoch pleased God. Enoch prophesied, and, and in that world of sin that he was already seeing, he himself wanted a home with God and a place of eternal rest. And so as he walked, and did you notice? Let, let's look back at our passage again, back in Genesis because it speaks of him walking two times, I believe. Enoch walked with God with, walked with God 300 years. And then verse 24, And Enoch walked with God, he was not, for God took him. Walking alone at Eve, and viewing the skies afar, all who say such things declare that they are strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And Enoch undoubtedly wanted to be with the Lord. And an amazing thing happened. And the Lord took him, and he was not. He was faithful, and he pleased God. Appreciate you. Let's apply these things to ourselves. Of course, being faithful, being pleasing to the Lord, standing against what is wrong, standing for the Lord's ways. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.